Hey there, Spark fans, Rob Reynolds here. Sound can be a great addition to any project. Uh, suppose I have a sensor set up somewhere and it's up and running, but I don't want to have to stare at the readout of the results the entire day. But by adding sound, I can program it to trigger an alert when a certain threshold is reached and that'll reach me audibly so I don't have to stare at something the whole time. A sound can also be a great way to personalize or anthropomorphize a project. I mean, seriously, can you imagine how much less of an impact a completely silent R2-D2 would have had? <sighs> no thank you. Now, adding a buzzer to a circuit can be as simple as adding an LED. But we want to give you more options than that. So this week, in an attempt to help you make your projects better with better sounds, we're introducing the new SparkFun Quick Buzzer. The heart of this little board, what makes it, dare I say, a super buzzer? is the fact that it includes an ATtiny84 with custom firmware, allowing you to control it over I2C, either via one of the two quick connectors, or by using the 0.1-inch spaced PTH pads. And although the default address is 34, that can be changed to anything via software, and that's included as one of our example sketches. And that means that as long as you supply enough power, you could theoretically use 128 buzzers simultaneously. The board also has built-in I2C 2.2K pull-up resistors, two LEDs, one for power and one for status, and jumpers for the I2C pull-up resistors, status LED, power LED, and JP1. The board measures our standard one inch by one inch, or 25.4 millimeters squared, and weighs in at just 2.85 grams. The board has a set of transistors to control the buzzer's volume. Now at full volume, it allows the full current of about 95 milliamps, which makes it pretty loud. A flyback diode is included to discharge any energy remaining when the buzzer is turned off. And this is really cool stuff, and in fact, I actually want to call on my old pal Pete to dig a little deeper into this for you. I'm here with Pete, one of our engineers. Pete and I nerd out about music a lot. Pete's a musician, I'm a musician, we nerd out a lot about music. In fact, Pete is the one who designed the new Quick Buzzer, and I'm going to let him tell you a little bit more about it. Oh yeah, we had a lot of fun designing this one. Um, it was a little bit of a challenge because when I got assigned the project, I just wanted to put so many features into it. <laughs> The little scope creeper was on my shoulder saying, more features, Pete, more features. <laughs> and I was like, I got to get this done. Got to keep it simple. Um, yeah, so um, the buzzer does a lot of different things. And the one big difference here is that we're actually able to get a lot more volume out of it because we're using a transistor to drive it. And so I was going to show the difference here on the whiteboard real quick. Uh, most of the time when you use a buzzer, you've got your microcontroller. and like a GPIO, right? Right. And you might have your buzzer over here and you'd probably wire directly to the buzzer and then directly to ground. Oh, GND, there we go. Okay. And so when we do something like this, we're gonna toggle our GPIO high, low, high, low. And that might be zero volts. And this is probably 3.3, .3, maybe five, depending on your Arduino. Um, and so right now, the amount of current that goes through this buzzer is limited by the GPIO. And most of the time, these max out around 40 milliamps. Um, and remember, we're toggling this uh, at a 50% duty cycle to make a frequency. So mm -hmm. really, this is only gonna see current half of the time. So right. you're really only getting about 20 milliamps, uh, 20 milliamps of current through this. And that's a pretty decent volume. Mm -hmm. But with this project, we thought we would um, step it up a notch okay. and actually add in some more circuit. So instead of being limited by this, I wanted to go directly to my power supply. So here's my 3.3 volts. And then we're going to put a transistor here. Let's see if I can draw this right. And that's going to go like that, like that. Okay. Oh, and then don't forget your uh, resistor right there. We don't want to hurt any BJTs. Right. Um, and so now, when I toggle this GPIO, I'm actually able to access all the current from my power supply. Nice. And these guys are rated, the data sheet says they'll max out at about like 110 milliamps. Mm -hmm. And so when you're toggling that and you're allowing full current through it, you get more like um, 50 milliamps about right and so before we were at 20 and now we're up to 50 and it ga you gain a lot of volume there so that's a lot of fun 
And then when I was deving the protos on this, I actually hand wired the whole thing on a breadboard. It was mm -hmm. pretty messy. Nice. I actually have it. I think. This is exciting. Seeing how the sausage is made. Oh yeah. Didn't disassemble <laughs> it yet. So this is what uh, I started with. And I actually really wanted to test out the actual transistors that we have in production. Mm -hmm. So I like put them on little mini breadboards there. Nice. Um, and then I hacked on a button, the quick button, because that's a really similar um, breakout board, a uh, little quick product. And so anyways, I started going like this and I was like, wow, this is actually really loud. Um, and that's wonderful. But in some applications, you might not need it that loud. So uh, we can actually fix that and we can uh, add a little bit more. Bear with me here. We're gonna do yet another one, but this time it's going to be the other kind. And let's see, you're out there. And a resistor to another GPIO. So it's probably like that. Um, now we've got the top side we can control and we've got the full side, uh, the bottom side, so we can turn it, turn it on and off. And then what we're gonna do is have another path to ground with a resistor before a switch. Oh, can I fit it all in here? That's gonna go to a GPIO as well. Okay, so now I can decide which one do I wanna connect to ground. Do I wanna go full volume to ground or I could turn this one off and turn this one on and now I can put, I think we, on the board we put a 2.2K. I think that's right. And so, so now I have a volume control from the microcontroller. This is the AT Tiny. AT Tiny 84. And, um, and it can decide how much volume we want to allow through this. Because you, you add a little more resistance in line and now the current's uh, down again. And so what we did was we actually duplicated this circuit Another two times, so you actually have four volume choices, and that leads to some more fun, you know, capabilities on this little thing. Um, yeah, so all of this can be controlled via I squared C. So we have our quick over here talking to our micro, and you don't have to wire up any of that stuff. Um, it's just like kind of plug and play, and you're playing around with the examples. One other thing I'm going to highlight really quick is that it's actually really good to have a diode, a flyback diode on this particular buzzer because it's actually a magnetic buzzer. Mm -hmm. So there's a coil in here and that has a little inductance in it. So um, what did we use here? I think this is a shot key. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> um, and so that prevents any, uh, when you stop this current all of a sudden, there's a voltage spike that can damage things in your circuits. So this helps give a place for that to flow and uh, makes it a much smoother circuit. Yeah, so, you know, when I first took this project on, I was like, you know, you can always just wire up a buzzer off your GPIO and be in, in playing around with it and stuff, but we wanted to add some extra value and make it much easier to plug and play with. Get that extra volume, get the protection of the diode there, um, and then uh, it all happens on the quick cable. So it's pretty fun. Um, I imagine you have some examples to share that utilize maybe some of this volume stuff? I do, I have a few examples. One other thing, uh, in the old days, when we used to make a tone with a buzzer, we would use the tone library, the Arduino tone library, and you were stuck with one buzzer at a time. With this, since it's controlled over I squared C and you can change the address, you can use up to 128. As long as you've got enough power going to them, you can use up to 128 of these quick buzzers at once. So I'm not gonna use 128 today, but I will demonstrate with three. So here's the first example. Now, as far as I'm concerned, when you start coding your first example, hello world. When you start physical computing, you blink an LED, right? Well, if you're doing music for the first time, I think this is what you have to do. Yes, Rob. Oh man. And you can see the LEDs blink along with the sound. And like here when the bass comes in, Right, you see the bass there with the harmony and melody over here. Oh, so good. So, and now if you want to cut back on power, you can cut the traces to those LEDs. Yep, nice. Very good, Rob.
Thanks. That must have taken a while to program all the, the notes there in that yeah. array, right? It, it kind of was, wasn't as a musician. I was able to just look at, you know, look at the note, look at the music, look at the code and say, okay, this is C5, this is D5, this is E5, and just change that pretty quickly. Nice. I mean, it was still time consuming, let's face it, because it's three different parts. Yeah. Now and that was just... So, so that's a lot like tone in the Arduino library, right? You get your pin, your frequency, duration. Right. I wanted to highlight really quick that the Arduino library for this quick buzzer, um, oh man, I'm forgetting the name of the function. Is it, it's just buzz? No, it's... Um... <laughs> play, uh, play melody? <laughs> There's so many functions in the library, right. but essentially it's a lot like tone. And I think it's actually, uh, you have to configure. Mm -hmm. So it's gonna be whatever your instance is, dot configure. Um, and we don't need a pin, right? So, right. but we do have frequency and duration. And then we also have vol. Right, the option of volume yeah. at the end. So I just kind of wanted to highlight how similar this is to what you might be used to in terms of playing with buzzers in the Arduino library. Absolutely, it was really, really an easy transition. Now that was just, all three buzzers at once, but you don't have to play them all at once. You can stack the sound. You can start with one and then add one and then add one. And I have an example of that too. Now, those of you who might know my musician background know that I'm a trumpet player. And if there are any other trumpet players out there, then you will certainly know this example. <laughs> Name that in the comments if you know it. Oh, so good. Wow. A lot of notes in that one, too. A lot of notes. I'm yep. impressed, Rob. And notice that the tempo was changed. There is a, an easy way to change the tempo of all this. Tempo was decided you've got a function that's basically 1,000 divided by 4 for a quarter note, 8 for an eighth note. So that gives you the milliseconds. By changing that 1,000 to, if you lower it down to 800, that's going to give you a quick, quicker tempo. If you increase it up to, say, 1,200, 1,500, that will slow down your tempo, and that's the only thing you have to change. Everything else works around that, which is kind of brilliant. It's great. Yeah. It sounds so good. Thanks. I love it. I just want to strap them to my ears, and then I have trumpets going right. left and right. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've also created a, a MicroPython package for this. So if you have an XRP, and really you should have an XRP, those are great, you can add this to it and you can create the illusion that your XRP is going by much quicker, say like an emergency vehicle with a little Doppler effect. Huh? Just like that. Nice. A little Thanks. frequency shift and volume yep. shift. See? Well done. Thank you. Yeah, there's so much, so much to be done with this. And as a nerd and as a, an engineer and as a musician, putting all those things together, I'm gonna be spending a lot of time with these buzzers. Pretty fun. Yeah, um, well, I think that's pretty much it for us yeah, right now, I huh? That's about all I have for now. I think I have one more example to share. Okay. If, if we've got a second. I think we've got it. Oh yes, I believe we've got a second. Stick around. Pete never disappoints. Do you, do you have a spare USB for me? Can I steal that one? Yeah, absolutely. And then um, let's, I'm gonna steal this buzzer if okay. that's all right too. Yeah, 100%. We'll just hopefully not hot swap too much. Right. You know? <laughs> let's see, demo day. Is this all the demos that we have in the, oh, this is it, this, this one. Okay, so I haven't told Rob much about this, but we were testing the frequency range of the buzzer. We wanted to see how low we could go, how high we could go. So I mapped a uh, potentiometer to control the frequency of the buzzer. And I'm gonna let you actually perform this, this buzzer demo. Ooh. Hopefully it will start for me. I Improv. Need to see. Okay, so notice now it's all the way to the left. Okay. That's like trying to buzz a zero. Okay. So it doesn't make anything. Try, try taking that over to the right. Yes. <laughs> oh, 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 that 11K at the top there, right, really. Rough, oh. but, but the dogs enjoyed it. Yep, ears are up. Yep. <laughs> well, that is the new SparkFun Quick Buzzer. You can pick yours up over on our website. Show us what you do, what you, how you improve your project. And until next time, 
Stay safe, be kind, and happy hacking. Okay, you probably want one more, right? <laughs> okay, so in honor of the big sports ball competition recently, this is for you SpongeBob fans. Sing along if you know the words. The winner takes all. <laughs>